welcome to uh, this great event organized with the great help of Idaho Commerce and Idaho A. Uh, I am here to, uh, to deliver. I'm an Idaho exporter. Been doing so for the last 17 years. So when I wake up, I export and uh, until I go to sleep, I export. I'm an export product myself. I grew up in the Netherlands and then got exported to the United States. <laughs> and, um, but uh, I'm also the chair of the Idaho District Export Council. That is a uh, a volunteer organization in the community linked with the U.S. Commerce uh, Department uh, by Idaho exporters and for Idaho exporters. So if you're new or an existing Idaho exporter and you have questions, we are a, a, a peer group in the community that can help you at least get you in the right direction. That's one of the reasons we're putting on events like this. Exporting can look like a mountain. I guess this morning a mountain with snow on top. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, there's a lot of resources here in Idaho as well as in the region that could help you start your exports or, or help you or guide you in the right direction to get in touch with people and making sure that export isn't an accident becomes part of the program. Uh, with further ado, uh, but with one special shout out to two people, to Jen for getting this all together and all these people here, great speakers as well as guests, as well as Denise, uh, part of the deck for, for putting this together. Thank you again for organizing this and providing a great resource here locally. And with further ado, I would like to introduce you to Chanel, the director of Ag here for the state of Idaho. Good morning, everyone. It's nice to see some friendly faces for everyone I haven't gotten a chance to meet. If you're wondering where the heck is Celia, obviously I'm the new person. So uh, I came into the director role after Celia retired. So I started in January, but I have been with the department for a long time, uh, about 16 years. I've also been in Ag my whole life. And so the importance of exports is not lost on me. It is something that I know firsthand, uh, appreciate really at a ground level. And I just am so thankful for what you all do. I know you're not all Aggies in the room, uh, but we are so delighted to host you at the Department of Ag this morning. It's a, a great team effort. And I have to recognize how honored we are to have the Consul General here this morning. Thank you. Um, I actually get to go to Japan in June, and I'm very excited about that being a visit. We're going with the Potato Commission and uh, we're really excited to team effort with USDA, the Undersecretary of Trade, and uh, the Wasada Group, and with Chelsea. Chelsea is going to Japan. So thankfully, I am going with the expert. She is going to help take care of me. Uh, we are um, incredibly grateful for Eddie and Tara. Um, I just can't tell you enough. You guys live it. You know how important this relationship is. But the fact that Idaho, as a somewhat small, small but mighty state, has experts like Eddie and Tara working on relationships for us. Um, it is something that I have known and understood since my first year here at the agency, how important this relationship is, what your expertise does, what your work does for us, and we're so grateful for it. I think everyone in the room can appreciate that too. And a huge shout out to the Commerce and Department of Ag teams. Uh, we have excellent staff. I know that Eddie was really clear with me last week that his work is made easier because we have great stateside staff to make that relationship seamless to be great contacts for you all. Um, so we're delighted to welcome you this morning. I can't stay the whole time, but um, I hope you guys are have a great discussion. You know, ping us if you need things. You know how to find Lori, you know how to find Chelsea and the Commerce team. And uh, we're here to help any way we can and I'm excited for the day. So thank you. Um, thank you also for hosting us in this great space. Um, and it's good to be back in person. I've been here many times. So it's good to be face to face. Sneaking behind you for a minute, Harry. We're just getting out of the way. Um, so next up is uh, Marcus Focus Japan, Mr. Yuzu. I just served, just arrived. Export product himself as well too, and, and based out of Portland. So thank you, Council Daryl, for being here for a quick introduction. Uh, and then his colleague Yutetsu from Jetro will provide a quick overview for Japan. So thank you for being here, and thank you for supporting Idaho Exports. Good morning, everyone. I'm Yuzo Yoshioka, Punta Jem Japan in Portland. I am in Portland about three weeks, three weeks ago, and this is my first visit to uh, Idaho. And I'm very honored to be invited to today's seminar and to be 
given the opportunity to send a few words at this opening. Adam has long been known in Japan as a peaceful potato state. <laughs> this is the old stereotyped uh, image. Adam uh, now has a thriving uh, high tech industry and is attracting many foreign companies, including Japanese ones in this field. Today's seminar, entitled North Asia Market Overview, aims to provide enhanced trade opportunities to IDAF entrepreneurs and small business owners uh, who wish to explore Asia market for their products. It will brief them on the dynamics and the characteristics of the Asia market and with a special focus on China, Taiwan, and Japan. As you know, Asia is the center of the economic growth in the world. If you want to your company to grow by exporting your goods uh, uh, abroad, understanding the Asia market is uh, crucial. I hope this audience uh, will find uh, today's seminar uh, informative and uh, useful. And taking this opportunity, I'd like to express my sincere gratitude to the organizers, organizers of the today's event, namely ISDA, IDC, SBA, IDC, USCS, and the Honorary Council of Japan in Idaho, Edo Frutkenstein, for their enormous efforts and passionate devotion that uh, made uh, today's event uh, possible. I also would like to uh, thank today's uh, uh, guest speakers uh, representing China, Taiwan, and Japan. I hope uh, uh, for today's seminar we have great success and bring the Asia market closer to either four. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Yukitsu Hayashi from Jetro. Actually, I'm stationed in uh, San Francisco, and uh, this is my first time to be in uh, Idaho. I'm so surprised to see the uh, snowing this morning. <laughs> 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 and it's April. Uh, actually, uh, in California, I mean, in uh, San Francisco, I also enjoy the uh, sunshine, so maybe it's a kind of a big remark, uh, welcome remarks for me to see the snowing here. Anyway, I saw the uh, the town, the the uh, is it's so such a beautiful town ever in my life. So uh, definitely, I will come here to enjoy the uh, the sightseeing here. Or maybe next time I will be uh, enjoying the uh, skiing in the mountains. <laughs> so uh, today, uh, my mission uh, uh, must be the uh, to introduce uh, the, uh, the how the uh, jetro works and also the uh, Current uh, economic situation between Japan and the uh, United States, also between Japan and uh, Idaho. So, just give me a uh, little uh, you know, time to, to introduce uh, the agenda. Uh, okay, uh, I don't think uh, you are familiar with the JETRO thing. So, JETRO is a uh, uh, Japan External Trader Organization. This is a non profit organizing organization uh, established by Japanese government. Uh, and uh, we have uh, 76 uh, offices uh, all over the world. Also, uh, 47 uh, offices uh, in Japanese uh, domestic market. And uh, if we want to uh, uh, ask uh, us for the support to uh, expand your business in Japan, you can use this old uh, network uh, all over the world and also in Japan. And uh, we also have uh, six offices in uh, America, uh, United States, also one in Canada. I'm stationed in San Francisco here. And uh, this San Francisco office covers uh, West Coast uh, states and also mountain states in the West Coast. I'm sorry, I'm not a tech guy, so I cannot use the uh, laser board. <laughs> and uh, this picture uh, shows that uh, uh, 
the uh, current uh, situation between the United States and Japan. Uh, actually, uh, United States export to Japan, we have many uh, import the agricultural things or oil, minerals, and chemicals. The sun national is here. And also, uh, Japan export to the uh, uh, United States mainly is a nationally and the translation like a cars. And uh, in 2021, 44.3% uh, uh, of total US exports were shipped to Japan. And uh, around 5% of total imports were developed from Japan. So uh, actually, uh, Japan and the uh, United States relationship, we are ranked fourth uh, for the, uh, as a, a trade partnership. Uh, we are uh, after Mexico, uh, Canada, and also uh, China. In the fourth is Japan. So uh, let me talk about the uh, uh, foreign direct investment to uh, the United States. Uh, since 1990, uh, Japan direct investment to the Japan uh, the United States is, uh, has grown uh, steadily. And uh, we are the, uh, the number one among the uh, foreign investor uh, in the United States. Uh, you can see here Japan is the first one, Germany, Canada, UK, but definitely. The Japan is the number one to the uh, to uh, for the investment in the United States. Yeah. It's some time. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me talk about the uh, Japan relationship between Japan and Idaho. Actually, Idaho export to Japan uh, mostly the one third is uh, processed uh, food here. Maybe potatoes or beef or some other uh, foods here. And uh, actually, in Japan, McDon in, uh, the McDonald's in Japan, their uh, potatoes are heavily rain in the market. So I really thank to you. <laughs> I really love to eat the potato from the McDonald's. And the one third is, is classified. Maybe this is a kind of, you know, uh, uh, semiconductor related things, but I'm not quite sure. But uh, I know that Idaho is now a really, uh, you know, uh, heavily uh, you know, uh, focus on the uh, uh, industry of uh, semiconductor related uh, things. So maybe it's kind of like this. So, so we have a really uh, heavy re uh, connection to you. So I think uh, maybe in the future also, we are still continuing continue this kind of a deep connection. And uh, Japan and the uh, uh, United States, we are really uh, have a very close relationship in the economic uh, uh, situation. Uh, this uh, picture shows that uh, uh, how the Japanese uh, industry invests uh, in the United States market. Uh, the uh, that group shows that uh, uh, where Japanese industry invests. Uh, uh, investor is a number one. So here, in most of the uh, states, uh, uh, 36 out of 50 states, uh, we are the number one investor uh, in those state, uh, states. Here, Idaho, we are number one for the investment. Uh, I want to see back to the Okay, and uh, we also, uh, uh, as I mentioned, uh, we are the number one foreign direct investor in the United States. We're also creating a huge uh, job opportunities here. Uh, we create more than uh, 500,000 jobs here in the United States. Also, we are uh, also uh, investing in the R&D sector. It's kind of uh, 12 billion uh, US dollars per year here in the United States. So uh, I believe uh, your industry in the Idaho, you have a big strength in the agricultural processing food and also uh, in the, the uh, semiconductor related industry. But uh, if you want to expand your business in Japan, uh, we are now a very uh, the Japanese government, government is heavily focused on the uh, green issue or environmental 
industry or, or clean tech industry. Especially, I mentioned here, a uh, Japanese government is now uh, uh, highlighted in the uh, 14 sectors of the uh, clean tech energy uh, industry, like uh, offshore wind powers or hydrogen or nuclear uh, battery things. So maybe if you have a more uh, the the technology technology related to these uh, uh, sectors, uh, please uh, tell me so I can uh, make a kind of a good connection to the outcomes here. Well, this is a, a kind of a map uh, showing that the uh, for the uh, uh, Japanese clean tech climate industry in Japan. There are many uh, Japanese major uh, companies are classified as this field. Also, uh, we established the uh, Japan uh, Hydrogen uh, Forum. And uh, uh, this is established in the uh, December 2021 uh, to discuss about the powder use of uh, uh, hydrogen in the future. Uh, as, as you know, Japan is heavily relying on the uh, uh, outside of the country for the energy. We import a lot of uh, energy, coal, and oil from the uh, Middle East or uh, from Australia. So we need to uh, improve our energy issue by ourselves. Nuclear and also uh, hydrogen is a big, big uh, target for us to uh, accomplish, and, and accomplish in the future. And uh, this picture shows that uh, uh, the member companies uh, in the Japan Hydrogen and Forum. You can see uh, big names of uh, Japanese companies like Toyota, uh, Toshiba, Mitsubishi, Honda. Uh, they are all joining in this forum. And then also, uh, Japanese government is uh, uh, focusing on the uh, uh, future. Uh, of uh, agri and also food tech uh, industry. Uh, this picture shows uh, the landscape of uh, how the Japanese major companies are uh, classified when they are uh, joining in this uh, uh, field. Uh, you can see a lot of uh, major companies here, and uh, they are all looking for uh, good partners uh, with uh, good technology for a good uh, market or good. Uh, uh, and uh, to 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 have a good cooperation, so they can expand their business uh, globally or in the United States or maybe in Asia. And uh, I heard that the, uh, Idaho is also very uh, proud of uh, having uh, tech companies here in the street recently. So. In Japan, also, uh, we are also uh, looking for opportunity to expand their fintech uh, business. And uh, still, uh, Japan, uh, you know, uh, even though Japan is a developed uh, uh, country, but uh, we are also looking for a good uh, tech company uh, for, for partnership to build up uh, this industry. Now, uh, let me talk about the, uh, our service, the, the, the service uh, by Jetro. Uh, we really invite, uh, uh, welcome uh, to invite uh, your industry, your company to go uh, to get into the Japanese market. Uh, Japan, uh, Jetro is uh, making a service to Japanese companies to get into uh, the market in the Japan, uh, United States and also vice versa. That means uh, we are uh, also providing the service uh, uh, to your companies, uh, American companies, to get into the uh, Japanese market. And we provide market information, also uh, free business consultation. Also, uh, we provide uh, the uh, free uh, rent of uh, uh, office space. <coughs> we can uh, provide uh, provide work. Uh, your uh, service in Japan. Also, uh, Japanese uh, government or maybe uh, local government in Japan 
and sometimes they provide a certain uh, subsidy uh, to the programs. So we can uh, introduce those programs to you. Also, uh, if you want to set up the companies in Japan, uh, we can assist uh, how to set up the uh, cooperation. <coughs> also, as I mentioned, many Japanese companies are now looking for uh, good partners who has a uh, tech or knowledge or a market. So maybe uh, if you uh, have a good uh, technology market or a dominance in the market, uh, please ask me to find the uh, best partners in Japan. And uh, uh, actually, uh, we're not only uh, uh, providing their service uh, just on the uh, uh, menu list, but we so we also uh, providing the uh, uh, customizing support. You uh, you can give us uh, your uh, information and what you want. Uh, I will, we will customize and uh, uh, service which is uh, fitting to you. Into the Japanese market, we are, we have already uh, served to the uh, American companies. Uh, it's more than uh, two thousand companies in, uh, all over the world. You can see big names like uh, Amazon, Costco here, Johnson and Johnson also, Tesla, yes, yeah, uh, Chat GPT. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, please. Uh, Tell me, uh, you want to go to Japan? The here, uh, this is my team here. Uh, if you are interested in, uh, to get into Japan, uh, please contact me. Or maybe I'm not uh, good in English, so maybe you can find my colleague here. Misako is here. Yeah, uh, she'll be uh, joining the uh, uh, discussion later, so maybe you can contact uh, her here. So once again, I really uh, appreciate to be here uh, to have a good contact with you. And the uh, Japanese government uh, is now really uh, want to invite uh, your company uh, to get into the Japanese market. We are really happy to support your uh, expanding uh, business in Japan. So uh, please contact me. Yeah. Thank you very much for coming uh, visit. Thank you. Thank you, Council General, and thank you, Jethro, for uh, for this great introduction. Maybe we challenge this audience to get their company logo by your next presentation. <laughs> From my experience, it doesn't matter the size of the company, right? You know, if Tesla is looking for help from Jethro, as well as from other people in the room like uh, Eddie and Tara, I, I was a really small company. We had four people, and we started using some of their services and some other insight that really helped us get to the next level. So that way, we didn't get short-sighted and exporting no longer was an accident. So, so you know, don't be too humble. They are there to help us well. Uh, the next speaker, Tara, on behalf of the state of Idaho, uh, I've known Tara for a long, long time. I've been to China many, many times. And with further ado, uh, go ahead, Tara, and let us know what you can tell us about China. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I represent the great state of Idaho in China. I'm really happy to be back, uh, especially to meet you in person after many virtual meetings, online meetings, uh, video conferences in the past three, four years. Uh, this is my first time back to Idaho after COVID. Um, I'm really happy to be here. Uh, let's uh, work together to explore more business trade opportunities in China. <laughs> so everyone wanted to know what is going on in China after COVID, especially their economic situation. Uh, well, uh, on the, you know, according to all the statistics, China is still world's second largest economic um, you know, by the end of 2022. And you can look at chart, especially the, the G, uh, GDP uh, growth rate. Actually, before COVID, China already uh, start to slow down. 
and but they still expect 5.5 to 6 percent per year growth. Um, but uh, the past three years during uh, pandemic, you can see the numbers being you know down a lot and bounced back for one year. And last year was a disaster, down to three percent again. Where everywhere else in the world already opened up, but China decided to still close the border. And even you probably heard Shanghai lockdown. I was there. <laughs> uh, and, you know, uh, I know. Uh, my time is short, but afterwards, every anyone interested, I can share a lot of my interesting experience with you. <laughs> but but today, uh, I'm here. I have lots of friends are back in China already, and I, some of you are getting ready to travel to China. So the government is literally open up in December 2022. About 80% of us got COVID. One one month, and we get it over. <laughs> And they open the border and 10 year visa. If you have 10 year visa, uh, it's working again. You don't need it to apply visa. Um, you, you know, you, but you still need a PCR test negative report uh, with you to travel. And that's still limited uh, for me to travel here and back. It's, you know, I have to do transfer flights, not that many direct flights, and it's too expensive. Hope that situation will, will change soon. And I always like to compare to give you the true truth about China. You wanted to compare with US and China. Um, the population we uh, in China is 1.4 billion is four times of US's um, population. And in the past 10 years, um, per capita growth in China was 123% and China was 40%. And despite being uh, world's second largest nation, China's GDP per capita still falls in the middle range globally. Uh, it's increasing, but comparing with US, we are quite behind it, which also uh, tells you that there is a potential for further uh, development. Okay, these are the areas Chinese governments are focusing on developing, but we just uh, mentioned the um, chat, uh, chat GP, GPD. Yeah. Um, so um, China now is uh, the government funding is focusing on innovation. Um, they claim they are the, the second uh, largest uh, R&D investment uh, country in the world now. Uh, after the release of uh, chat GDP in US, uh, all of a sudden, that's in China, there's some Chinese companies like Tencent, uh, Alibaba, they also released their own charts. I haven't had time to play with these charts yet, but uh, I've heard they are not really, you know, charts, GDP, right? <laughs> the one we have here. Um, so, uh, and uh, clean energy, um, uh, focus, I think, uh, all over the world. China is also showing their efforts to, you know, to uh, be the leading country in the field. So they're closing down um, coal mining and, you know, installing more like solar, high pro, and the um, wind power in China. Electronic car is their focus. Um, with fuel by electronic car, the government gave you some subsidized. To encourage you, like uh, cheaper plates, car plates, and you know all that. And uh, Tesla entered the China in January 2019. Now their annual production uh, each year is six uh, seven hundred fifty thousand vehicles. And there are also many Chinese companies are also building uh, their own electronic cars um, in China. So. You will see lots of electronic cars on the on the street now, and they have installed 4.4 billion charging stations. Um, it's it's been very convenient that you know lots of people buy Teslas in China. Uh, healthcare, of course, we have a large older people population, not enough medical, uh, especially during COVID. They realize they don't have the you know the subsidized medical. Uh, system to to support that, uh, especially that population is still growing. 
no, it's a lot of. But it, the good thing is now they have because of COVID, people cannot go to hospital. They need a, their regular medicines, and so they have a very good online system. All these e-commerce company they launched the e drug store uh, online. It's been very easy. Uh, there's online doctors diagnosis and give you you know. Um, they help you to to do um, medicine. Uh, like for my father, he needs three, four kinds of medicine each month. I only had a problem to get the, the sleeping pills. Uh, the rest of us, I can all purchase online regularly. Uh, yeah, and e-commerce, of course, with the you know the population, and the consumer power is growing. Uh, they not only shop online um, from domestic suppliers, also. They uh, shop all over the world. So there's a lot of platform apps that can help you to shop. You uh, sit in a home, you shop from all over the world. Like even during um, COVID, I still can get my supplements from US and my clothing from France and you know, you can do all that. So the the, uh, the logistic uh, systems is there to help. So we have many companies interested in, especially consumer goods interested in, in going onto that, that platform. Uh, agriculture products, of course, we're still having a lot of success in China and tourism because COVID, after COVID, people cannot wait to, to travel again. Uh, US China, this, the number shows China is now US second largest trade partner, and China is US third largest export destination, and China is still the world's largest trading nation. Um, for I want also mention uh, we have a big success of agriculture products. Uh, China secures its position of the top buyer of America. Uh, in the past three years, the the uh, growth has been um, you know uh, increasing every year. And top um, products are soybeans, corn, uh, cotton, sorghum, and beef. Uh, US, US, uh, Idaho in China, so we are ranked the fourth largest last year, uh, and uh, it was a good increase of 38% from 2021, and some of our top export um, products here. Um, I don't know if anyone's in this industry. Okay, so we, we constantly uh, Try to help people to identify more export opportunities. So I tried to combine the top China import with top uh, Idaho export, and I came up this list. So if any of you is um, you know working in these industry areas, you have you know product falling in these categories, uh, please let me know. I'll be happy to uh, explore the opportunity with you um, together. Uh, I don't know many of these very well myself. I haven't uh, worked with our company, but I know we must have, uh, you know, good companies are exporting, uh, no matter where, maybe not China yet, but those are the China's top import. Um, so, uh, this is how we work. So in you know in China is one of the state of Idaho uh, overseas coast. Uh, we work closely with Idaho companies. We uh, help Idaho company to identify market potentials. Uh, we give suggestions of market entry strategies, and we also do research of suitable Chinese partners for you. Uh, we organize promotion, marketing, sales activities together with you. Um, so these are examples of some events uh, we are that are taking place or we are in, in our plant. Like on the top, the House of Beauty virtual tradition, we're already working with six Idaho companies. And it was great that I, in, uh, instead of meeting, having conference calls and meeting them online, I was able to meet some of the company and I have two of their facilities while I'm here. Um, so that would make, uh, make it uh, very helpful for me to help them to match Chinese uh, partners. Um, and we also uh, have uh, 
the culinary seminar um, at the Hotel Labs and the, the bottom one, the China International Import Expo that has also become our annual uh, events. And we, uh, we, we've been having a lot of uh, success. Um, so in Kushan, China is uh, a big market with great business opportunity, uh, but it is in heavily impacted by economic um, business environment and the government policy. So it's an ever-changing market. Uh, it is very important to, uh, to keep updated. And uh, um, so whether you are already doing business in China or you are uh, just starting to explore opportunities, um, you, uh, we would suggest that you uh, staying uh, informed and the building relationship is should be your top priority. Um, and the, our office in Shanghai um, is in China is based in Shanghai. You it's your home away from home, and uh, uh, I'm your eyes and ears in China. <laughs> so. Uh, Feel free to contact me at uh, any time. Our focus is uh, Idaho export, but I also help company wherever you have problems in China, even uh, um, in import sourcing from China. Like last yesterday, I was at a, a, a you know a, someone's facility. They had the issues with their uh, manufacturing equipment from China. Uh, I'll be happy to help them, but they because their manufactured products are exporting to China. So it's you know it's it's uh, anything we can do for you. It's all you know part of our, our services. And uh, even when you start to travel to China again, I can help you with hotels and train tickets and suggestions of your travel uh, uh, agenda and um, uh, where to eat. <laughs> <laughs> So here I am. You have my contact information. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, who in the room here has exported to China? Okay. Who was familiar with Terra and the state of Idaho resource? Okay, good. Uh, let's keep growing that. I've, I've benefited personally as well as with the business from, from using Terra. Uh, spread the word as well too. China, just like Japan, is a key growth market. Actually, we grew a lot during COVID, uh, and you would be surprised if you turn up the news to see how many countries around the world really want to do business with American companies, including Idaho. We got a big competitive advantage, so let's keep using that as well too. Uh, so thank you again, Tara, for being here in person again. So uh, up next is Eddie. Yes, based out of Taiwan, but I know you cover a lot more in Southeast Asia. So we're looking forward hearing from you on behalf of Eddie. Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Eddie, and I uh, from Taiwan, and I run the Idaho uh, Asia office based in Taipei, Taiwan. And I think I'd like to say that Idaho really is like my second home because I have been to uh, Idaho more than sixty times. You know, every year I, I come back at least kind of twice a year, and I've been to almost everywhere from San Juan all the way down to Boise. Westburg uh, and Idaho, and in past uh, 10 days, I have been through a kind of a whole different season here. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so before I uh, get me in special, before I talk about many Taiwan market and a little bit of Southeast Asia, I think I'd like to answer one question first. Like in my, you know, I have been to many uh, company visits in past 10, uh, 10 days, and one question came to almost every visit is how is the Taiwan and China kind of relationship? And I, I think I like to uh, answer that uh, in a different way. Uh, two U.S. kind of uh, international uh, press and media, they came to Taiwan. They have a lot of discussion, lots of talk, and lots of kind of reports about how serious the cross-strait relationship between Taiwan and, and China. And they send people to go to Taipei and different cities in Taiwan to interview people there. And the, the, the common uh, kind of conclusion is they were so surprised to see how calm 
people are in Taiwan. And this is the, the first answer. And the second answer is, you know, when you have really in a, in a, in a big situation like that, if people really have the fear, and two things will happen immediately. One is a lot of people will send out their capital, mostly to the US. And secondly, the real estate kind of market will slow down kind of rapidly. But that few uh, thing has not happened uh, in Taiwan yet. You know, we still see a very stable financial market, and every day the uh, kind of market, uh, it, uh, foreign currency exchanges are very stable and no panic at all. And the real estate market has been very stable. Slow down a little bit, but not mainly because the uh, kind of tension between China and, 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 and Taiwan, but because of the uh, kind of a, a market kind of a slow down. O overall, the kind of world economy has been slowed down a little bit. And the third answer is you can see that here and now we get along really well. <laughs> <laughs> we have been friends, you know, forever. So that, that's my answer to the question that some of you might ask me the, the, the question later. Uh, today, I'd like to uh, cover the economy. Uh, environment in Taiwan, and just give you a little bit of update and market and consumer trend in Taiwan, and of course U.S. and Taiwan trade. Uh, and I'll talk about a little bit about uh, Asian uh, ASEAN market, which cover uh, ten country. I, I travel to this region for trade show for business regularly, and U.S. ASEAN trade, and also let you know that our kind of a, a main event trade show in the next. Eight or ten months. So, if any of you uh, is interested in any of the program, you can uh, contact my colleague here or contact my office. To show you the item, to show you the difference, you know, people compare the Ukraine and Russian war with Taiwan and, and, and uh, China, but we have it very uh, straight. And so, that make the the potential country a little bit different. So Taiwan is, in terms of island, it's a big island, but in terms of the population, actually the population is really not big. 24 million, and the GDP last year is uh, more than uh, 760 billion, in which country a small island is, is really big. The uh, actual uh, capital income is uh, 32, uh, uh, a little more than 32, uh, a thousand, but the actual uh, kind of purchase uh, parity, uh, GBT is more than uh, 50,000 uh, US dollars. This uh, since the March, uh, kind of 20 years of full, full scale opening. Uh, you can just buy a ticket, as long as you have a ticket, you can just go to Taiwan. You, need to, you don't need to show any vaccination proof. Even if you are not vaccinated, they allow you to get in. And you don't need to wear a mask starting from April 17, that's next week. The, the only place I still require you to wear a mask. It's a hospital and hospital uh, kind of related uh, building. And so it's uh, fully open. But when you go there, I guess people are so used to wearing masks. So you still see, I would say 80, 90% of people, even who are walking on the street, they still wear a mask. So sorry for that. And the only <laughs> view one that, you know, don't, don't wear a mask, except I go to hospital. And, uh, the economy is slowing down a little bit, as you know, as I just mentioned, because that's uh, kind of uh, caused by the uh, overall uh, slowdown of the world economy, and also the higher kind of interest rate. You know, last year the mortgage rate in Taiwan averaged about two percent, or a little bit between two percent and two point five percent. Two point five percent, but now that mortgage rate actually was up between. Uh, 0.5 or kind of one percent. So it's it's kind of uh, uh, because higher interest rates slow down the, the overall spending and uh, business. And semiconductor is still very strong, which is the, the main uh, industry in Taiwan. I think during the COVID, uh, I think uh, Taiwan uh, economy uh, you know in the past three years has been really strong. And part of it is kind of because the the high demand. Of a semiconductor and very strong in domestic and international uh, travel since the fall of the, the open of 2022. I'll show you, I'll just pick up a photo, a photo to show you how open it is. See the trade show, tourism, you know, 
just people going outside. But one common thing is people wear masks. But the, I think it took about much train a little bit because the public really changed a lot of consumer and uh, the behavior and also the the, the, the the market, how people market their products. You know, uh, first I'd like to talk about the you know, market trend a little bit. Right? Taiwan has been the world second largest export market uh, for Idaho products in the past seven years. Lots of phenomenal thing for a small island just like Taiwan. <clears throat> And I'd like to talk about the market trend for agriculture and the products. First. The new trend in the past five years is high protein. We need to show you a product. <laughs> this is a high protein, this is a powder product. This is the, the most powerful uh, uh, protein package. This small package has a 30 a gram of protein. And those protein ingredients are from Idaho company. Mm -hmm. So high protein. Uh, mineral has been you know, growing so much because the health awareness and also people learn that uh, to keep your muscle kind of strong, you need to have kind of uh, enough uh, protein. In our traditional Chinese diet, we don't emphasize that kind of uh, protein at all. We uh, emphasize what you kind of nice looking, smell good, taste good, but nothing related to protein. So this has been a big trend uh, in, in, in the market. So you see whey powder, cheese, tree nuts, like uh, chia and quinoa, the seed, are very, very popular. If you have a lot, a lot of products, it's easy to find the market. And top quality and uniqueness, like uh, well, what you be, uh, expensive wine and cherry, cherry, you know, we have been shipping a lot of cherry, and also what you be uh, as well. Natural and organic product, and also more supplement, just like what the Kira mentioned, you know, when you have more money, I think people will pay much attention to how to keep yourself and a lot of healthy or happier. And, you know, in, in uh, Taiwan, we were in a subtropical kind of region, and the size of the land for agriculture is very limited. So we grow a lot of fresh products, but nothing for the food ingredient, like uh, uh, most of the dairy ingredient, uh, potato, uh, flake, uh, has, has to be imported. And vegan and vegetarian uh, food trend it has, has been very big. Okay, let's talk about uh, consumer tr uh, trend. Because of COVID, really the spending habit has been turned to a kind of very deep, deep kind of digital and kind of a mobile. Uh, lots of users. You know, compare my tradition and I have a daughter and son. They order their kind of a daily uh, things. 80% from just using a kind of a real cell phone. But I'm more kind of traditional person. I don't use that, especially ordering food. I still like to cook it for myself or just go to the restaurant. I, I, I don't like the idea of like Google, but the new generation is just it's everywhere. And the shop more kind of and order more from online. And it's part of fast growing on delivery, especially as I mentioned, the young generation. And uh, the young generation, they follow media, digital, key kind of opinion leader, shopping, including food. And use social media to share and check products and bias opinion before they uh, go to the, 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 the product or the place for order. And consumer, this, this is a very, very kind of different. I think this might be happening in the US too. Consumer, the, the consumer and promoter. If the, the borderline is very, very big, you know, because a lot of consumer they become live and online promoter and they become a kind of marketer for some uh, specific product. So consumer promoter borderline is getting, you know, it's not there uh, anymore. And it's just so popular, I think, in China. I might be in Taiwan, maybe in China as well. Uh, Taiwan and US trade is something I'd like to talk about. Uh, but lateral kind of trade, uh, uh, Taiwan is the 10th trading partner for USA uh, worldwide. And last year, the bilateral trade is uh, 136 billion, so 19% up. For a small uh, island, the number is really, really big. 
and S below to Taiwan is uh, 43.7 billion, it's uh, close to 90 percent up, and import from Taiwan is a 91.8 billion, it's also kind of a 90 percent up. There's a big uh, kind of a deficit a big, between the trade because uh, US, a uh, lot of like uh, AMD, like uh, Apple, uh, like so many different tech companies, they rely on the very, very uh, advanced chip uh, from uh, several different companies. So that's the, because of the, that demand, uh, you know, was increased during the COVID. So that's when it widened the, the trade gap between Taiwan and the US. And also the increased export uh, to the US from Taiwan actually has benefit, benefited from the trade war uh, between the US and in Taiwan. Uh, this is the U.S. and Taiwan agriculture trade, and I think those are the major one, and that really match the strength of Idaho beef. It's, it's a lot, <laughs> except besides like wheat and uh, soybean and corn. This is number one U.S. beef. Uh, total is uh, seven uh, seven hundred forty dollar a minute, and cherry we have some cherry, frozen potato, cheese, milk, whey powder, and alfalfa hay. Those are uh, what I know is good at. We have lots of companies that are very good on those kind of products. <clears throat> See, this is the what <laughs> beef, like beef, cherry, and this kind of number one way powder seven from Gordia. Uh, in, in Taiwan, if you go to Costco, you see high of this product in Costco. And this the a kind of a high grade beef in the Asian world. And also the, the other product to show you. <clears throat> and this is the, uh, the next slide show you the main export, non agriculture export from the US. And you see like the machinery, and also then here kind of uh, a semiconductor manufacturing equipment, electrical machinery, mineral fuel, optical, medical uh, equipment, aircraft, of course, Boeing. And those are the big items. And the energy products. Somewhere and all higher education are also on the main list. Taiwan, although it's only 24 million population, but US is the number seven or number six uh, kind of biggest uh, 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 market for uh, Taiwan to send of uh, students over for higher education. But those are the big items, but uh, that does not mean some small items uh, kind of. Uh, Industry has no opportunity, but it just has to tell us. That's like uh, what the Kevas has mentioned. The obvious main goal is to assist any other company. No matter it's an egg, it's a tool company, it's a non egg. As long as you have product, you like to try to see the, whether there's opportunity in the market, you can always let us know. And we will give you, uh, we'll do a little bit of vision to do a little bit of market with our research and let you know. So this is a great kind of product uh, for the market. And sometimes uh, we will tell you maybe not that potential, but we can still try. But that's uh, the whole goal of the overseas office to provide services to assist export for any country that is not for, uh, to overseas. <clears throat> yes, yeah, so uh, the distribution uh, from consumer, I think we see this probably quite often. Besides the mobile and the digital, digital kind of a, uh, the, uh, the sales channel, uh, to the traditional one is still important. We have a large hypermarket. We have 14 Costco in Taiwan now, and Costco is going to build one more uh, to, to to 15. So for a small island, which is only one sixth the size of Idaho, and we are going to have the, the 15 uh, Costco in the market. But uh, what Costco building is different. We have two stories because we have a very <laughs> of inside, not like here. We have a huge one floor, but here we have the two floor that's for the product and three uh, underground for parking. So it's a, it's, here is a high rise. It's a very different. And supermarket, we have uh, close to uh, 2,000 supermarket island wise and convenience store, which is extremely popular in Taiwan. Two main uh, chain, they have uh, more than 12,000 uh, kind of, uh, companies. So, 
I calculated that so every 2,000 people in Taiwan support a convenience store. The public store is more for the higher end product, the Chinese shop, we have more and more and more. So with all this traditional one um, plus the, the, the kind of a mobile distribution that really is a very, very mature and well established a market for a consumer product and especially and also for electronic product. For non-traditional and kind of more like a, uh, industrial product, they use a lot of website, they also do a lot of trade show. Trade show has become the number one tool for promoting industrial products. And of course, personal visit and demo, they can do that. And also a lot of company they will invite their customer to do seminar to introduce the, uh, the new products. I'd like to talk about a little bit of business practices in Taiwan, but this is not just individual kind of a business. They use more online message than email. And so more and more people, companies stay away from email. They think that's so complicated. You can just use instant message. So this has become very, very popular. Okay. And, but this, brought to this one, Different concept of privacy for work. Here, when you meet a new company, you, you think you will be able to do some business, but you won't work, you won't ask for these WhatsApp apps, ID immediately. But that's in Taiwan. Whenever you meet a new customer, you will say, Can I have your WhatsApp or like, uh, uh, like WeChat, that's in China, and Line for Taiwan mm -hmm. and, and China. So everyone is talking to each other by so, uh, this kind of uh, instant. Uh, kind of a messaging uh, platform. So this is very, very different from what you have here. And of course, you know, everyone expect a quick uh, reply, but uh, in the international business, business, more and more companies stay away from the traditional letter of credit kind of payment. They use more like a DA and DP that means document against acceptance or document against payment. I mean, you ship the product without asking for payment, but you are holding the document. So when they ship one, three to five days before the, sh the ship arrives in port, and you will need your customer now say, hey, the, the cargo is coming, you need to pay, so I won't, and I will send you the shipping document so you can clear the cargo from the customer. So that is becoming very, very popular. And the way it becomes so popular is to save money because uh, cash letter of credit costs money from both sides. If I'm an importer, I have to pay money to my bank to open the letter of credit and send it to my supplier. And the supplier can do sugar the, the cargo, they go to the bank and submit the document and it costs them quite a bit of money to, to, to get uh, the, the, the payment back. So this is, uh, you know, more and more companies are using this. And over the year, I think uh, company learn uh, kind of credibility is very important. So I think most of the company are very reliable on payments. And when you go there, uh, something you need to be aware of. And the payment is important in some business, not all. <laughs> Drinking might help business. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, be careful on color uh, for gift, especially hat. You don't want to give the Chinese uh, kind of green hat, which means a bad thing. So other than that, because I, years ago, I traveled to the north and met with a lot of a lumber company. A lot of company, they like to give a green, a green hat. I said, no, I, green hat is okay, but no green hat for me. So this, <laughs> this is just one thing they need to be. If you're in lumber or you know, something helpful. Okay, let's move to the ASEAN. This is the, the 10 country. Uh, include uh, kind of included in the ASEAN. Uh, that, that ASEAN represents association of uh, Southeast Asian nations. And uh, now the association has uh, 10 members. I think most of you know Philippines, Vietnam, uh, Thailand, uh, Malaysia, Singapore, Indonesia. And they also have uh, Myanmar, Laos, uh, kind of Cambodia all included. This region has the 10 country. And the total population is total 700 million, which is uh, almost two and a half times of the total population in the US. Yeah. And the GDP in last year is uh, 
3.6 trillion in Latinum. And uh, GDP growth uh, last year is 5.5%. And projected growth uh, this year is uh, 4.7%. Uh, and next year is 5%. And the recovery after COVID is going down by a different pace. The Philippines is faster. And Indonesia, and I think uh, Bangkok was not as fast as the kind of uh, Philippines. So it's because the, the economy levels are a little bit different. So the recovery, the pace is a little bit different in this whole region. And the, the market and consumer trend is very similar to Taiwan, like uh, except uh, they have a very fast growing uh, middle class with higher disposal income. <laughs> That's a quick uh, digital adoption. Uh, last year, you know, so more than uh, more than half of the total population they use kind of the digital for, for businesses, uh, 370 million. And by the year of uh, 2025, the number will increase to 390. It's a uh, lots of mobile and app based uh, business and less social media marketing. And very well broadcasting online for, for products, even for some uh, industrial products, and very fast growing for uh, home delivery. So, this is like the panel one, like the delivery and service revolution. The gap between city and countryside is disappearing because we you know, use a cell phone to do business. Uh, I talked about a little bit of kind of market trend. I think we talked about a little bit. Consumer trend is a mobile and app base. Eighty-five uh, percent of the consumer they try and use kind of app for business. And by this is kind of a different grocery and uh, fresh water or even uh, online home delivery is, is also big. And just like Taiwan, consumer become marketed via online and social media. And this is the U.S. and uh, same country uh, trade as for. I try to get a kind of more updated number, but this is the, the most updated I can get. Uh, Seventy-six billion uh, in 2020, and the uh, for export market for the U.S. product. And these are the number you can see. Southeast Asia, uh, right next to Mexico, is the uh, uh, U.S. is the special dairy. Uh, the, uh, Second largest airport. These, these are the main uh, uh, agriculture and product export to this uh, area the dairy, ingredient, tree nuts, meat. Again, you see the high protein products that are needed in the whole region. Fresh fruit, apple, cherry, and stone fruit, because it's uh, something that they don't grow in the region. It's a tropical and subtropical region. And uh, prepare and quick to serve the product. The food product is uh, getting very popular. And let's just show you uh, the, the top of our export market for this product, uh, Singapore. But Singapore is a much, you would think Singapore is only a five million population. How so lucky, how could a small country become the US uh, number one export market in the region? Well, because uh, Singapore has the, the probably world best and most efficient port facility. And so they have the Huge port and airport to take people to take goods and also use that as a regional hub to get part of the other country. So, this is why you see, uh, you know, man export 35 percent uh, goes to Singapore. It's not all consumed in Singapore, it's a hub, it's a kind of a, a springboard into the uh, Southeast Asia market. And Malaysia, Thailand, and those are the Vietnam, so the, the five major market. And here you see. The uh, main uh, kind of top five uh, export item, very similar like the, the product to Taiwan yeah. electrical, machinery, machinery, mineral fuel, uh, medical instruments, and their plant, but also a uh, lot of software and higher education. Okay, uh, if you finish, okay. And this, uh, this is the last one. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this are the, uh, they are the program we are going to have from June all the way to February. Uh, next year, so we have push show, we have semicon, the Taipei that's the aviation and defense show, and we are going to do the Singapore air show again, which has uh, built a lot of good results from our company. And 
And they will. So these are the uh, programs that my office will be doing for the next uh, 10 months. So if you have a product and uh, you're more than welcome to join us. So this is my brief update on Taiwan and South East Asia market. And if you have any questions, I will be here. And of course, you can talk to me by email. But thank you. Thank you, Eddie. I knew uh, Taiwan was open because you brought the governor and uh, many Idaho companies this fall as well. So okay. I was in Southeast Asia myself and the Philippines and Thailand. Uh, a big market for us as well, too. Uh, as we set up the panel here in just a few seconds, we want to give a shout out to our sponsor as well, too. Uh, and as a friendly reminder, Tara and Eddie have a strict deadline as they need to go meet with some other Idaho companies here as well, too. So if you have any questions for the panel here, specifically for, for Eddie on, and Tara, we can start with that. And the other panelists will have some extra time here at the moment when we get introductions on everybody to see you around here. So, yeah, good. Yeah, good. <laughs> So if the panelists could just grab a chair and line up a chair. Chair sit here. Yeah. Or just, yeah. We're going to have to get nice and close. We're seven and four. Well, Marty, good to see you. Thank you for coming. Good to be here. Should be seven. No, what are Start on the left. Yeah. Chelsea? Yes. Go ahead. Okay. So I am Chelsea Coleman. I work here at the Idaho Department of Agriculture. Um, I'm a trade specialist. I work directly with Tara in the China office, um, but also help Idaho companies export to East Asia. So Japan, Korea, Hong Kong. Um, and then really quickly, Michelle's in the back. She works with Eddie's office directly with Taiwan and Southeast Asia. And then we have one more trade office manager, um, Tanner. He works with Mexico in our, and Fabiola. Um, in the office down there. Um, so if any companies need help with dairy certificates, plant certificates, certificates of free sale for ag companies, um, feel free to reach out to us and we'll, we'll help you out. Thank you. Hi, um, I'm Ms. Alcorito from Jetro San Francisco. I work as a director for business development. Um, as my boss, um, Mr. Hayashi, has already covered what Jetro can support. Um, we understand that each company has a different stage and interest and strategy to expand their business through Japan. Um, we can customize support and also can be very flexible. Um, we can start from giving you information on Japanese market and regulations. We understand that uh, finding Japanese regulation information in English is really tough, so we can offer that in English. And also, if you're ready to um, register a company in Japan, we can support an incorporation. And also, we can direct you to uh, um, how to obtain your visa. And also, if you're doing a business trip to Japan, we have a facilitated office space. Um, we can offer you 15 business days free of charge. So that's why I guess it's an attractive guest for us. So, and we also have a um, office, um, general office in each prefecture and have a great relationship with local <laughs> government. So we have the, um, information and incentives. So if you, there's any idea of doing business with Japan and with Japanese companies, please reach out to us on LinkedIn. We have Jetro USA LinkedIn. So I guess that's a good start on resources and have well, welcome to have any questions. Thank you, Tina. Hey, everybody, I'm Tara. Now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hey everybody, I'm Tina Salisbury. I am with the Idaho Department of Commerce on the international team. I'm a trade specialist and I am here with Jennifer, our manager, and Mitch Elke and Sharon Kennedy um, make up the rest of our team. Similar to Ag, we are here to help Idaho companies export and our team is a little bit different. We are broken up by industry sector so that that way we can get to know your company in whatever market you want to go to. So whether it be to where our trade offices are held um, or if it's beyond 
where we have trade offices. That's where we start working with Amy and her team um, to expand to the rest of the world. So you can always just pick one point of contact and we'll figure out which team member of ours can, can best help you. Other thing that we run out of our office that we share with the Department of Ag is the, the SEP grant, the State Trade Expansion Program that we receive from our friends at the SBA. Um, I'm the grant manager. We use these funds to help you do international trade shows, sales trips. Um, we're going to be Keep an eye out here very soon. We're going to start. I'm working on the application right now so that hopefully SBA gives us another round of money. And we have some exciting things that we'll start announcing on what our next plans are, our trade shows for the, the coming grant year, which is beginning in September 30th of 2023 through September 29th of 2024. Um, I think we have about four or five trade shows planned, our financial assistance awards and our online global program grants that you can apply for directly for your company to do your own shows. Otherwise, we organize big pavilions and bring multiple companies along to those shows so we can help organize those and act as your program manager so you can focus on doing your business. So keep an eye out for that. Those, those things are coming here very soon. Good morning, everyone. I'm Amy Benson. I'm with the U.S. Commercial Service. Um, so basically, we are the U.S. Department of Commerce, and we have offices in over 70 countries worldwide and 108 U.S. cities. And basically, we work individually with uh, small, medium-sized companies to help them expand their international business, get you into new markets, find good foreign partners to begin working more closely with you, bringing international students to the U.S., as well as more international tourism, tourism as well. We have industry teams that work specifically on, you know, healthcare, aerospace, safety and defense. We have so many different resources. We do thousands of events worldwide. Um, so you can contact me and we begin working individually on where you um, can go and what new markets you want to explore. We work closely with Tina and Eddie and Tara as well um, in country. So in Northeast Asia, we have offices, five offices across Japan, same footprint across China, all through ASEAN. So we've got staff um, in each of these different markets, whether it's nutritional supplements, healthcare technologies, uh, safety and security, you're running drones, we have a staff person, we can set up a call in country to talk specifically about what a good market entry strategy would be for you to, for that country. So thank you. Okay. Hello, I'm Jim Luton, like Isaac. I'm, <laughs> I'm with SBA's Office of International Trade, uh, which is a, a sort of a subgroup within SBA that's focused solely on export finance for small business. And I'm one of 20 international trade finance specialists across the country. I happen to have the very good fortune of serving Oregon, Southern uh, Idaho, Southwest Washington, which is primarily Vancouver, Northern Nevada, Hawaii, Guam, and the Northern Marianas. I, I have a lot of water in my territory. <laughs> But we have three programs, three international programs at SBA that provide working capital and term debt financing for plant and equipment to enable small businesses to get a foothold in export markets around the world. Obviously, China, Taiwan, very prominent markets uh, for my territory. And uh, we want to be able to provide you with the necessary capital to get you going and get you established and become an international exporter. So please ask any questions you may have of myself or the rest of the panelists. Okay. Thank you for the introductions. Quite the panel, all in one room. Uh, as I said, Eddie and uh, Sarah have a hard stop at 1030. If you have a question, uh, please stand up briefly, introduce yourself or what your company does. And ask the question and ask again if you have any Taiwan or China specific, go ahead and ask away. We'll start. Go ahead. Um, John? Yeah, Jim. Yeah. Jim, yeah, sorry. It's okay. Yeah, I'm going to <laughs> yeah, Kevin Quinn, I get a lot of keys. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm with uh, Idaho Mill Products. Right. 
So we're doing a lot of international already. We want to do some more expansive. I'm curious what you qualify as small business. Is it on a revenue basis? How, how do you it's a it? fairly sizable matrix uh, that it keys primarily off of the industry you're in and, uh, and the number of employees. Okay. Uh, I would say manufacturing concerns can be as large as 500 employees. So that's mm -hmm. a pretty good size small business. But uh, we can qualify that very easily. Uh, you are a production company as far as producing milk. And so I'm going to say you're going to qualify as a manufacturing concern to have four or 500 employees. We have an alternative determination, which is $15 million of net or tangible net capital uh, and uh, $5 million or less of annual revenue over the last two years. <laughs> Okay. Just, yeah, I was going to say I, you may exceed on that on that count. Yeah, we exceed on the back end, but we only have about two hundred and thirty. Okay. More yeah, employees. Kevin, I I can say Idaho Milk has been a recipient of, of the sub grant. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So with that, yeah. you you went through the similar eligibility. They go deeper when you're getting more money from them as far as loans and that sort of financing. Um, but yeah, you been qualified at yeah. least under the SEP program. I should have qualified. I've only been there about three months. <laughs> no worries. No worries. <laughs> <Just go figure. laughs> All right. Helpful. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Go yes. ahead. Hi, I'm Fred Worthy. And uh, Amy, we spoke a little bit as well on your end. Um, we're looking for some assistance on making contacts for marketing and also distributors in China and Hong Kong through the cross border e-commerce. Mm -hmm. Yeah, happy to set up a call. We can talk about what, you know. I have a meeting scheduled on Monday. Um, yeah, and yeah. then, but also <laughs> follow up with you directly. Okay. And hi, Jeff. Yeah. Good too. Thank you for joining us today. Thank what you. kind of products do you make here in Idaho? Uh, well, we're making infant formula, and uh, which is baby infant formula, yeah. mm -hmm. and also nutritional supplements. So we're covering both sides. Yeah. Kevin, actually, the the uh, adult milk product has benefited from the uh, step grant that uh, joined the uh, the Taipei lab last June, and I believe that you have uh, been exporting to to Taiwan. Yeah, and my father actually from you were uh, a partner uh, there, and that's something I'm going to talk to you. Later. Yeah, we should yeah. definitely talk. <laughs> that's real. So, yeah, also in China. You participate in the, the CIE, yeah. the international yeah. economy. Yeah, we have uh, we have dreams for even further expansion. We're actually taking a trip in June to Japan, separate from the the, the trip that uh, ISDA is doing. So we should all talk. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions from the audience for this great panel? Yeah. I might ask this, but I know the answer, but I'll ask it for the rest of the <laughs> But, and this is for the whole panel, but for companies that are either already exporting or are new to exporting, what are some of the hands-on services that you can provide in specific countries? So when the company is ready to go, what are some of the things you can actually do on the ground for them? Can we talk with Jethro first? Yes. Um, if you're ready to go, we can also um, give additional information. And also, if you're coming for an exhibition like Foodex Japan, it happens in March every year in Japan. It's the largest food related exhibition in Asia. Um, we can set up a business meeting there if, if the company has a specific name that they want to meet and also have a uh, set an online meeting or any in person meeting with the officials from government. Yeah, we can do uh, market research of the particular industry and the product that you do. Uh, we, of course, that will be included on the um, statistics and, uh, you know, the market potential, market size, uh, and entrance strategy suggestions, and trade shows and events. Uh, and also in terms of uh, the research of Chinese partners, we actually can do a background check. Uh, so we'll put together all these reports for you. And uh, we can also involve um, all the, you know, video calls and, uh, you know, uh, meetings, uh, emails. You can see to copy us. 
um, you know, anything we can do um, even beyond that. Even after you enter the China market, we still work with you hands in hand and to, to promote the market and sell your products. Well, beside what the Taylor just mentioned, one thing which we have found very useful in uh, promoting new to market uh, at our company to Taiwan and the region is we only will take their information and uh, translate it into the Chinese. It's still easier for the local uh, people to read. And we will, uh, we have a good kind of a database and we will select, let's say, 20 or 15 potential companies. And we, the, the first step we will do is once we have all the information in Chinese, we will send your information to those targeted companies. We, we are not just sending you those 15 uh, kind of units. Sometimes they, maybe a lot of them, they are not endorsing your product. So we will send your information to them first so they can review it and they say, uh, and those they have a serious interest, they will come back to us. And we will, for that, we will send that to you. So it's a, a much kind of efficient and better communication uh, in the beginning. So you are talking to those that they know your product already and they have interest in your product already. So this and another uh, service we provide, uh, standard service we provide from that day. Yeah. And then, and then there is another office in Mexico as well. Yeah. Blue and Oterra. Yeah. 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 We are happy to schedule those meetings at any point in time, even when they're when they're back home and they stay up late, which is really nice <laughs> and convenient for us here in Idaho. Uh, Amy, then for your offices outside Japan, China and Taiwan, how would I work for Idaho Exporter? Yeah, so we can basically, if you want to go to a country, we can set up individual appointments, a whole day of appointments for you to meet pre-screened, pre-qualified distributors, foreign partners. We can do full back financial background checks on them. We can make sure um, if you need to qualify with certain, you know, FDA type equivalent uh, requirements by importing into that country that you understand what those particular requirements are. We can help you with hotel reservations. We can actually have our staff person who set up your individual business appointments. Typically, they can go along on the appointments with you, which is a huge intelligence for you right there. We'd never guarantee that because sometimes, you know, they're multi um, double scheduled. So sometimes we can't have that happen, but we always try and do that. We can um, basically help you with interpreters, anything you need to be successful in country, we can help arrange for you. Yeah. And go ahead. I'll add that uh, we're providing financing support so that you can go to any market in the world. But uh, let me clarify when I say financing support, we are not as a direct lender at SBA. Mm -hmm. We are as a guarantor providing the full faith and credit of the U.S. government uh, to help you gain access to financing from banks and non-bank lenders, uh, which goes back to the working capital and or term loan arrangement that you might need. And I want to point out that you don't have to be exporting to utilize these programs. If you have a, a, a well-developed plan to export, that can qualify you to gain access to a 90% guarantee, which is the highest offered by SBA for our program. Thank you. Last question from the audience. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm Tim Corney with Dallas Springs Mail. And um, anyway, I just want to thank the team for all they do. Uh, we're very blessed in Idaho to have people who work so hard for us, being a producer, farmer, Anyway, just give out my respect and gratitude for what you guys do. Thank you. Cool. Thank you for joining us today. Um, I'm very blessed as well to have worked with, with many of the departments and especially the people over, over the many years. Uh, 
been exporting with the current company for 18 years, and we really we had no international access. Now we're over 90 markets. Um, our exporting kind of started as an accident, but then we put a plan around it. <laughs> it can be dying because because there's a lot of companies. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but again, with these resources available here, right, I think one of the things maybe is like, do I really qualify for this or not? I would say if you're an exporter in the room, you know, contact them even you know in person or after, right? It's better to hear and understand what you're eligible for and what you can qualify for than think, oh, I'm, I'm too big or I'm too small for any of this. We were never too small and not even still too big, although we got acquired as a business. But part of the value in the acquisition for us uh, also was in, in having an export established business. So uh, that truly obviously paid off uh, for us. And since the acquisition six years ago, we more than quadrupled our business with direct people on the ground, but I still work with Idaho Ag, with Idaho Commerce, and with U.S. Commercial Service on, on events and in connections, and also in my role as part of the chair of the Idaho District Export Council, help companies like yours, you know, get into the right direction, get some consulting uh, insight, and, you know, be happy to sit down on a call or in person, or our members as well, to, to give you some insight that that exporting can be a daunting task at, at the same time, but also can see a lot of great benefits for your company. So, as I said, my job relies 100% on exporting from Idaho. I hope you or your team will have some more people here and uh, and keep probably exporting from Idaho and the other U.S. products. Um, thank you again to the panel. Uh, thank you again for attending in person. And uh, thank you, Idaho Egg. There's great Idaho agricultural products in the back, as well as coffee. So uh, enjoy it as well, too.